All right, so some hostility right now during this cross-examination of Dr. John E. White. Um, Lisa Lockwood, I'm going to come out to you first. What do you think of this cross? I mean, this prosecutor really getting uh, sort of some vibes from us here that are not very likable. What do you think? Well, what is her attempt? Her attempt, obviously, is to discredit him in some way to show that the baby was viable. So she's trying to ascertain whether or not the size of the child um, was something that could still have lived, that, that based on that particular time, the month that he did his evaluation, not post, not when the baby was found in, in the size and height, um, when they were able to put the remains together and get a new skeletal idea of what that baby could possibly have weighed in the measurement. All right, so back out here in the studio, I am told that the court just went into a sidebar. Unclear right now exactly what was that about. Um, but before we go back there live, let's talk here. We have a big panel right now. Kelly Hyman here with us, as well as Rosemary Arnold and also Lisa Lockwood. Um, first off, Rosemary, welcome to the show. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about this witness. So we've been listening to the OBGYN, and he has really been a good uh, witness for the defense, saying that he believed that Skyler had this IUGR, that she was dealing with, um, you know, the growth issue with this baby because of her eating disorder and her caloric intake. Um, what do you think so far? You know, we've been saying that this has been a good witness for the defense. I agree with you 100%. This case is going to come down to whether that baby was born alive or not. And in this case, this witness is giving you a plausible explanation as to why the baby could have been born dead already. And that's the key to the case. I think at this point, the prosecution really doesn't have any evidence, strong, concrete evidence that she killed a baby that was born alive. And here's more, just killing, no pun intended, killing the whole concept that this baby wasn't born dead already. Right, absolutely. And Kelly, one of the things we were talking about is how, I don't know if we, uh, we really like how how Dr. White's being cross-examined by this prosecutor. She doesn't come off as likable. Yes, absolutely, and she's becoming very aggressive towards him, and the doctor is very likable, but I think that what she's gonna try and do is obviously discredit his opinion, so saying that his opinion was based on the fact that there was no measurements, and so since he based his opinion on that, then his opinion is not accurate, and so basically trying to discredit him. All right. and. They are still in a sidebar right now. So, Lisa, I'll come out to you with this question. One of the things we know um, so far that happened earlier when police played or when we saw that interrogation video be played, this was a very big video that everyone was waiting for because this is where people believe that Skylar touches on speaking about um, the burning. And we know you as a forensics analyst here, did you find when you heard that that she admitted to it after saying she didn't sort of? Um, do you think that can help police or uh, sorry, help the prosecution here? She is yearning so much for approval from everybody. And after watching that and realizing that the interrogators created a theme for her to go forward with the burning and the cremation based on evidence that they thought was actually true, now we have to figure out why this baby was burned. So her denials all the way through and then up until the end, I truly believe in my experience and heart of hearts that she yearned so much to want their approval that she went ahead and said the cremation had occurred. Do you think that, um, you know, a young girl in her backyard with a lighter can actually produce a cremation? I mean, they used that word several times. And they sure. also, she used it, but only after they used it. There was exactly, and there, there wasn't any talk of any accelerant at all. And forensically, we know the baby is 80% water. Uh, she had just given birth. She's dealing with a placenta. She's dealing with blood. So just to ignite that is nearly an impossibility without an accelerant. 
All right, Lisa, thank you for your expertise on that. So I'm told that the sidebar was about uh, doctors An Dr. Andrews' interview with detectives, and it was about using that as evidence. It looks like the court is back live, though, now. So let's go listen again. Welcome back to Law and Crime. We have been looking live at the cross-examination of Dr. John E. White. This has been very compelling, as I said just before the break. Before we jump back live, I want to talk about it with our guests here. Um, first, Kelly, tell us, what do you think of this? I mean, this prosecutor has really just been relentless in how she's been getting into the nitty-gritty details about all of this. She brought up the pages from uh, appears to be a textbook, put those up on the screen, reading lines from that and asking the doctor if he agrees, if this is right. And this is all having to do with how he said that the baby here um, had these growth issues and whatnot, also relating to, um, you know, this being a stillborn. What do you think? Absolutely. I think the prosecution is trying to chip away and discredit him. As she was saying earlier, it goes to the real issue of whether the baby was born stillborn or was it, it born alive? And so she's really trying to discredit this doctor, basically showing that his opinion is not accurate, that there still is a possibility that the baby was born live. And ultimately, we'll have to see what the jury thinks. Exactly. And uh, Rosemary, what did you think of her cross? Because it was, it's really interesting to watch. Um, we see, we've seen this back and forth now. This is key here for today of, of what's happening in this trial. Trying to discredit his entire opinion based on the fact that there's no objective measurements. The problem, though, is I think he's holding up very well because he made a very good point. And the point is that at the end of the day, after the baby was um, dug up, they measured the baby then. And what he's saying is, well, there's not really going to be any difference between how tall or how large the femur was in the end of April that it was in the beginning of May. So what difference does it make that there were no actual measurements? Because at the end of the day, they did measure the baby after they dug up the baby. So you still also have other evidence. You have her in that prom dress with that teeny weeny belly looks better than I looked in my prom dress and I wasn't pregnant. So there, there's a lot of a lot of good things that he's saying. She's trying to just discredit his whole, his whole opinion, but he's not letting her do it. All right, thank you both. We're gonna go back to the courtroom live and continue listening to this explosive cross. Okay, so still listening to Dr. White here answer questions for and during this cross-examination. Right now they're talking a little bit about these bones and the findings from the bones and how that led to his conclusions about the baby being stillborn. And um, I'm going to ask Lisa, I want to ask you a question about this because you can speak to the, um, the crime aspect of this. At the crime scene, they were able to draw, withdraw these bones from there. And now you see them using that, especially the doctor here, for his findings about the size of the baby and how that, of course, relates to it being stillborn and the questions about the size of the baby. Uh, is this adding up for you? Do you think this is good on the Dr. Uh, Dr. White's part here? It's not. It doesn't bode well for him. The questions that she asked were very important because he was alleging two weeks before the actual birth that she was possibly uh, going to give birth eight to 10 weeks after that period based on uh, a size, based on a weight. What we discovered is when they were able to get the bones, forensically, it was a full-term baby. It was a full-term baby based on the size. So he was discussing again the viability of that based on the size at the time of his exam, I'm sorry, of the exam of the other OBGYN that he went ahead and looked at the notes. He was discredited because it was proven in that uh, discourse between the two of them that he did not have information that he used an actual measurement that it's possible that he used his hands. All right, Lisa, thank you. Also interesting here. We have much more to follow and to stay with for this trial. We're going to have to take a break right now, though. When we come back, plenty more on Law and Crime.